Hello and welcome back to World Fire 2023. I'm your host, Sydney Young. Now, if you joined us last week, you know that they were loading the kiln. Well, Tuesday, they lit it. I have with me Dr. Scott Meyer. Dr. Scott, can you tell me more about this project? <clears throat> well, it, it kind of started, I guess, as a kind of a, um, a reaction after the unfortunate COVID uh, you know, constraints that we all were under. And a uh, dinosaur like me doesn't understand uh, computers particularly well, but I started realizing uh, how effective they are at reaching people that are not in the same room as you. So after we emerged from all of that awful time, I started thinking, uh, you know, how else can we use this? And, uh, of course, we've been firing this kiln for 23 years um, here at Montevallo. And uh, so, but... You know, a lot of our colleagues, a lot of our wood-firing people all over the world are in fairly remote places. And so if we want to connect with each other uh, in real time while we're all firing at the same time, where we can readily use each other's approaches and learn from each other, um, I thought this would be a great technology. So, of course, uh, I'm known as a positive irritant. You know, I came up with that idea, and then Professor Jay Cofield, who I want to shout out for all of this, he, uh, he and you guys made this happen, so we're just firing a kiln. So we built the rocket, but you're, you're landing it on the, on the moon. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Scott. Now, we are joined by Clemson and Xiao Zing over Skype. Guys, if y'all can hear me, hello, and thank you for joining us. Here they are. Hello, we're here. Hey, perfect. Thank you guys so much for joining us. How are things going over there with y'all, with you guys? Um, we uh, eleven twenty to eleven thirty the whole night, and we know that uh, you were going night now, and that's our morning now. Wow. So they're at temperature. Yeah. Know, now, and and that's called a train kiln. Beautiful kiln, and um, you know, so they've been firing right along, and and they they are holding temperature, and like she said, it's their morning, so they they have been there all night, as as our crew has been for the last uh, three nights. So it's a it's a constant uh, activity. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Well, we'll be talking to y'all later. Now, like I said, we are joined by Clemson and Xiaoxing, but we are also being used. Four other kilns are also a part of this project, and we do have a Google Earth video that some students have made to show you where on the Earth that they are. Let's take a look at it. So the first one coming up is going to be ours here in Montevallo. Look at that. Beautiful kiln. What a beautiful kiln we have. <laughs> yeah. And do you know when ours was constructed? Yeah, we built it uh, from uh, 2000 to 02 and uh, fired the first time just about now in, in 02. So that was our first one. And uh, fired it twice a year for a lot of years, once a year pretty much now. Um, we, we have to split 14 cords of wood to prepare for one of these firings. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practice that starts us the minute it gets cool enough to do it in the fall. So we've been splitting all that wood since the fall. Wow, that's nice. There's a lot of wood there, so I know it took a long time. Now this is going to be one of the other kilns that we have that are joining us with this project. Now, Dr. Scott, can you tell me how you got in contact with these other kilns? Um, yeah, um, the wood fire community, in fact, the ceramics community in general, is, are, are pretty gregarious people. And I don't know why. I mean, we, we, I guess we need each other for a lot of these processes. Look at this humming along here with all these people gathered around uh, cooperati cooperating. So um, that's really part of our field anyway. And so folks tend to reach out and tend to know each other. And there's a great lady um, uh, who, uh, um, Elaine Henry, who uh, uh, was a publisher of one of the magazines for a long time and uh, is really hooked up all over the world. So uh, I saw her at a conference last year and said, what do you think of this crazy idea? And she is similarly bent in terms of trying to get people together to cooperate with each other. And uh, so we just got the word out and... Uh, 
not. It was. It, this is beyond my wildest thoughts about what would be the case. Uh, I mean, we're delighted with, to have all of these people. They're all incredibly talented and and diverse kilns too. So we're kind of looking in on each other's process. It's it's really um, really informative for us. Well, I know it's great to see your idea come alive, and I, I mean, I'm excited for you. Now, let's talk to some of our kilns that are visiting us on Skype. Clemson, if y'all can hear me, just give me a thumbs up. Perfect. Can y'all tell me what you think about this project? I don't need myself. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, watch someone... Awesome. Can you tell me what your goals are for this project? Uh, for right now, uh, putting down some tennis. <laughs> and getting a little sleep, John, right? Remember that? <laughs> that's, that's good. That's, that's good for John's problems. No. Uh, but I, I think... I think one of the goals is to kind of make these connections, um, fire the kilns, have – hello? Yeah, we Everything can hear you. Can, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, but to, to make these connections and, like, to learn some stuff. But also I think looking towards the future is building, um, building a larger community this way and really um, expanding – kilns and you know for us continuing on continuing on with this but to also like you know have our camera crew and like make it easier for us to communicate and do a lot of these things um and share this and then share this amongst the ceramic community um yeah that's one of, i mean it's a whole bunch of goals there's a whole lot there there's a lot here to to, to learn from Final question for y'all. What has been your favorite part of this whole process so far? Uh, man, for me, it's it's always firing. It's always seeing another kiln fired, watching the people stoke, um, seeing the train kiln fired um, when they're working. Um, as for my students, um, I'm not sure. They're, they're, I think, just learning and having fun. Is the biggest thing. I, I always, I always said it's like a classroom on fire. You know, uh, I mean, if you want to know how fuel interacts with air and produces heat, and how kilns operate, this is a ha pretty hands-on situation. So we we don't we don't just teach it. We need them. We need them to do it. You know, and uh, oh. so it's been great watching your students buzzing around and. All the other ones around the world, uh, you know, doing their jobs. It's, uh, you know, it's a, it, like I say, it's a, it's a community, even though we are the ones that are teaching it. Yeah, and I, I also think that a lot of them have really, there's, a, there's tons of questions. There's tons of just being like, why do we do this or how does this work? And, you know, us explaining it and those who know a little bit more being like, wow, I, I, this is really cool and to see them get more excited about clay um and I, you know and i get to i get to burn stuff too right <laughs> and when they uh, when they see what it is and then they go running back to the studio to make more stuff oh and, yeah or i see somebody that's petrified of flame but overcomes it 
and I'm watching her up there stoking and realize that, you know, that's somebody that overcame a tremendous uh, fear in order to yeah. really be a big part of our, uh, of our operation. Thank you so much, Clemson. We will hear back from you in a little bit later. Shazing, we want to talk to you now and find out basically the same questions. What do you think about this project, World Fire? Um, is that our turn? Can, can you tell me what you think about World Fire, about this project? Um, that's really cool, and uh, we're really curious about how the other uh, people fire their king, and I think it's meaningful to communicate with each other, and we really learn a lot uh, from this program. Yeah, and what are your, what are your goals for this collaboration as well? Um, I think is um, to learn how the other people uh, fire and um, it's um, and through the connection we find that we um, our clients from all over the world we become a big community I think is uh, impo also important to um, have a big community of fire, wood fire, and it, it makes us to um, share our techniques, tricks about the wood fire, and um, so it's a great experience, and we um, absolutely want to have um, special effects of uh, on the craft and the artworks. Love that. And final question, what has been your favorite part so far? Um, for me, uh, my favorite part is um, stalk, because you can um, see the wood uh, combust in the jumping fire uh, fling, and it's very exciting and um, interesting and also important for wood fire. And another interesting part about our wood fire is um, we did some uh, wood fire barbecue. <laughs> it gives us lots of joy. Yeah, and it's the a good barbecue. idea. <laughs> well, we should have done that here. Yeah, we should. <laughs> well, it's still not too late. Still not too late. We'll we'll try to do it later. Thank you so much, Shazing. We'll catch up with you in a little bit to talk some more. Now, there is a website that some students have made in another class just for this project. You can check that lower third on your screen to get there and see what's going on. Now, Dr. Scott, let's take a walk and let's see what's going on over here in the kiln. Can you tell me a little bit about the special Inagama techniques? Sure. Um, well, what you're looking at, I think, right now in front of me is uh, the main firebox. And the way that this kiln operates, and of course, what, one cool thing about this whole project is we're looking at a survey of all the different ways to fire with wood because we have all these different designs. Um, this is called an anagama, and it's a single chamber. And the way to understand its shape is basically a bottle on its side that allows heat to climb, but through a progressively narrower channel. And so it's really just a big ramjet. So it draws a venturi through the uh, wood that we're stoking now. So you introduce oxygen through burning wood, and you've got elevated temperatures that are, aren't possible any other way. So, so right now, this is a choreography up here. <laughs> they were talking about dance moves earlier, but um, <clears throat> this is our, uh, this is our uh, stoking dance. It, it starts at the very back um, of the kiln, and we have three corridors that do not have work in them that are up the side of the kiln and uh, so we are we've been side stoking which is what it's called for the last day and a half and it's a way to introduce heat to the back of the kiln because it, you know between the firebox here and the back we've got about 25 feet which is pretty significant so somehow we've got to move that heat back and side stoking is a way to do it 
Um, it also builds a cold bed. It influences the work. And the irony of all of this is the history of this. They would put uh, canisters around their pieces carefully so that they would not get wood-fired effects from their work. So all of those intricate glazes that we're all aware of in, in history um, that were high-fired were done that way. Now a bunch of artists decide that we like those techniques, and uh, so this is about uh, trying to achieve them on our, on our work, on our sculpture, on our pots. That sound, that's, I mean, that's really cool. I would not be able to do it. It sounds like a lot of work and really confusing to me, but you make it sound so simple. Well, that's very <laughs> kind. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's not rocket science, but it, it, it kind of is in a way. <laughs> It's, it's a little bit like science and alchemy. Um, I mean, I think al alchemy is kind of half science, half soul. And um, if it were a music, it would be jazz. Okay. Because each time we fire, you know, the, you know the melody, but it's played a little differently every time. So I agree with that. Now, I did hear that you have some tricks for us, a bamboo trick. And I am excited to see this. Well, he, <clears throat> yeah, um, I got to thinking about this and presenting this here. And so my, uh, my little uh, way to, to uh, introduce it is it might not work. <laughs> and if it doesn't, we're going to put a segment of green bamboo under the coal bed. And, and bamboo, of course, has segments, and it's moist inside of each segment. And it's also air sealed. So it'll heat up under that coal bed. And in about a minute, it'll either pop or it won't. <laughs> So that's, that's my way to inoculate the audience for, in terms of their expectations, okay. because we'll put it under there, and we'll wait, and we'll talk to each other, and it either pops or it doesn't. Now, the reason why they originally did that was not just to entertain people, but it was to throw ash. When it pops, it would, it would throw ash all over the work that's in the firebox, and that's actually what we want to have happen. We're doing it tonight because tonight's the last night of the firing and tomorrow uh, you know when we when we throw ash on the work we need it to melt and we need time for it to do that so tonight's kind of a great uh, window of time to try to do this. well can we see it here we go awesome right. okay guys this is going to be so exciting it either will be or it won't be. either way i'm excited <laughs> so And in, in some cases, we wait forever. <laughs> but uh, I've kind of just told my students, well, it's not going to work, and then pop. So sometimes no, we're it's We're not going to get speed with anything, right? No, we're okay. not. Okay. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not. Um, no, it, it stays in the kiln. It, it's, a, it's a little modest explosion, and it, it sends ash, you know, okay. where it does. Yeah. And, and so, it, again, originally that was it had the intent of putting ash all over the pieces that you're trying to, you know, create a surface for. So, uh, yeah, just keep going, guys. Yeah, okay. If we, if we wait, we'll wait all night. <laughs> so I heard you also have a wood door. Is this, what is this one? Yeah, now this one um, is, is kind of in concert with the last uh, technique that we're going to do. Um, a wood door is a, is a way to introduce wood to the kiln without doing what he's just doing, which is throwing them actually into the coal bed. What he just did is what we've been doing for the last three days. But a wooden door will gradually replace the one that's there. So it functions as a door, but it also burns on the, on the hot side. And uh, so it sends a blowtorch-looking flame through the, through the entire kiln. It's a great way to, uh, to drop a coal bed and not have it quite as high because the last thing that I'm going to do is uh, use our overhead chain here and our 10-foot tongs 
and reach into the firebox and grab a piece and try to put it into the coal bed. Um, and we have charcoal here to kind of enhance the effects on the surface. So I'll put the charcoal in there, we'll stoke it in there through that hole, and then I'll try to do that. Um, I say try because your depth perception is a bit off when you're looking, you know, more or less at the surface of the sun. And uh, so, but it's a big long. Oh, we heard it. Hey, it worked, guys. You know, it was modest, but I'll take it. <laughs> So, you know, you would, you would continue to do that, and, it, of course, the little explosion would throw that ash all over the place. So. Can we see the wood door? We can see the wood yes. door. And this will take a little bit of time. Okay. So we will build it, then we'll watch it burn, and while it's burning, you know, maybe other things occur, right? We'll there. come back and look at it. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited, though. Great, okay, we'll do. Let's see what's going to happen. side stoke and then I'm going to start doing the door. Okay, sounds great. Now, can you tell me about how hot the kiln is right now? Oh my god, we got two another two. one, guys. Two for two. All right, two for two. That makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> um, our firebox is um, about 2400 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Uh, when you hear them say 1100, you know, obviously it's Celsius in there. We know we're converting, so we're on different uh, measurement scales. But um, 2,400 degrees is what we have in the firebox. So that's at temperature now. And the surface kind of gets gooey. And uh, everything that we do, like the bamboo bombs or like what we're doing next, puts more surface on the work. And that's what we're trying to do. So, yeah. I will, it is very hot out here. It, it's, war it's warm near this kiln. I have gear on and you don't, so. I'm yeah, I won't be getting any closer, <laughs> is what he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get a shot of them doing this, too, because this will be cool to see. Yeah, this is the side stoke. This is the side stoke that we were talking about. So there, there, there's a student on, on each side of uh, the kiln, and they're going to put uh, little tiny pieces in, and they communicate with each other because they have to open together and they have to close together. If they don't, then the remaining person gets a little bit of more flame than they would like. So, so the idea of cooperation um, has consequences if you don't, you know. So, um, so they are focused and they've got the right gear on and uh, they know what they're doing, you know. I can see those bricks over there glowing. Yeah. Hello! Hello. They're getting louder every time. Not so bad. How many did you put in? I thought I put in two, but we had a spare. <laughs> Here we go, guys.
Okay, Dr. Scott, now tell me, explain it to me. What's happening now? So what's happening is the, uh, the door is actually fuel. So at once, it's closing off uh, the kiln, just like a door does, to oxygen from outside. But number two, it's, it's not dumping into the cold bed. And, uh, you know, so number three, it's still fuel. It's still fueling the kiln. We're not losing any temperature. But it's going to drop that cold bed. Right now, if you look at the cold bed and you see that diamond effect, that's well known to wood fires. That's a healthy cold bed. That means a healthy mix of air and fuel. And uh, if it's not so healthy, it looks kind of like it's dark, and you have to get in there and mess around with it, or you, you need to do one of these. So oftentimes we'll do one of these to kind of clear things out a little bit. If I'm going to do the thing with the uh, tongs, I need a, a, a cold bed that's not so high because the I won't be able to get it to pieces. So, so that's why I thought we would do this technique and, and pre also prepare for that process. So. I like it. Now I'm really wishing I had the marshmallows so I could roast them on this. And this, this yeah, looks easier to roast them with. We could, you could hold them in your hand and do that. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd hold them in my hand. Well, I, you know, I get a really long stick and yeah. do it, but because it's already hot, I don't want to get any closer. Yeah, right. There's got to be a bad pun involving some more. But, um, so gradually we push this in. Uh, it'll eventually burn down. And, um, you know, oftentimes uh, people will chase it with another one and another one, and they do hours of this. We're just going to do this one. So um, some people fire a kiln this way, so they never throw anything directly into a coal bed. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited to see how this pro progresses throughout this show. And we are going to come back and look at this later. Now, now, since we can't be there in person, obviously, we do have a video to show Shaxing's firing process. Now, let's, let's take a look at this video, guys. Hello, everyone. Here is our king. And we are getting ready for it. We are loading. And here are the king furnitures. Stokes and works. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's our pleasure to Skype with you, all of you this morning. And I remember that Professor Mayer has mentioned the height of the chimney. And we really have a long chimney, nearly eight meters. Uh, and it was a little noisy this morning in the Skype. And we are running outside, so we can't hear you clearly. And I think we can explain it now in the WeChat. Uh, we can hold a high chimney because we have enlarged the firebox for uh, this king. And for the king, this large, people often make the firebox one brick and a half long. And we made it two bricks and a half long for this king. Um, the firebox, as you can see, so it's suitable for a high chimney, and we think it's easier to control the king. Here inside our king, this is the front of our king, and this is the end. The outside is the chimney, and we have already put some works under the chimney. The works here always surprise us because we get lower temperature here and more ashes. And as you can see, the wall here is to guide the heat to the ch uh, chimney. And also, in front of the king, we use the king furniture. Uh, the works is already inside, so that the king furniture or the uh, works that is very thick will bear the strongest heat Hello everyone, as you can see, we will finish our loading soon and this is how we stacked our king furniture and the wares. And as you can see, uh, the wares are in different materials and in different status. 
some are already fired um, maturity and some are just basically fired and some are even greenware here it's raining outside and finally we finished our loading with a nice piece of work from Mark Lofer and the pieces from Professor Bai looking forward to tomorrow here, here we are just uh, uh, light the incense. Uh, we we just uh, uh, began the praying now, and the first one is light the incense. The three incense, we put it on the bottom of the kiln, and uh, then we we put uh, uh, three bowls. Uh, inside is wine, salt, and uh, rice. <laughs> And uh, here we just uh, prepare some fruits like orange, banana, and uh, another one is apple. We will put apples in this plate. Okay, that's all for the praying. The uh, three three plates of fruits and the three bowls of salt, rice, and wine. And now Meng Tong is <laughs> he light the incense before the firing chamber and uh, praying. Look at that, guys. That just looks so cool. Okay, well, Xiaoxing, I wanted to talk to y'all really quickly. I love the video. I know obviously we can't be there in person, but I loved getting to hear more about your process and your kiln. Now, can you tell me about how many pieces you have in your kiln right now? Um, so many pieces, and we, we, we didn't count. <laughs> um, I took y'all a while. Maybe um, 80 or uh, one, 100, maybe, <laughs> we guess. <laughs> That's still a lot of pieces. So, yeah. so for y'all's kiln, what was your goal temperature? Uh, for now? Now we are... Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Uh, like uh, about uh, 1300 and like, 15, like that, yeah. Okay. Well, it's hot over there too. Good lord, they're very hot guys. Um, so how long has this kiln been in use, do you know? Um, uh, we've been using it for four years. Okay, and how long have you guys been using it? I guess you specifically. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, usually we will fire fire the uh, these kilns about uh, four days and uh, three nights. All right, final question. What have you learned during this process? About um, it's about very... Them? Okay, okay. It's very interesting to see the bamboo bomb and uh, wood, uh, wood door. And for for us, we use uh, the barbecue to uh, make our coal bed thinner. And we both don't want the coal bed too high. And so we 
uh, get some coal out and barbecue. So that's the same thing. And it's very interesting to hear different ways to control the uh, height of the coal bed. All right, thank you. Clemson, well, I see Clemson's busy. It looks like they're stoking theirs right now. Clemson, if y'all have a chance, give me a thumbs up and let me know if y'all can talk. I know they're probably really busy, though, at the moment. They got to keep it hot. Oh. Hello. Hello. Bad timing. I'm so sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> so can you all tell me about how many pieces you all have in the kiln? Uh, <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, there's like three or four larger works and, then, um, I don't know, 150 pieces, um, of like small mugs, cups, bases, bowls. Um, but there are a few larger, you know, 20 inch tall bases and pieces in there, but, um, that's my estimate. Now, what is your temperature right now? Um, cone 11 is almost down on top. Um, and then 10 is pretty much down everywhere else except the bottom where I'm waiting for 9 to go down and 10 next. So 2,300 or so at the top um, and uh, probably 22. Our pyrometer doesn't read right after a certain point so I, it's pretty much it's a sort of like a way for me the barometer essentially um, to know when I need to put wood in um, watching it go up and down and final question what have you learned during this world fire process um, I'm not great with technology <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, there's a lot of different methods, a lot of different kilns out there, and um, I'd like to fire them all. But, you know, we'll see how that goes. Yes, okay. Shazing, Clemson, thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Now let's take a look at our kiln real quick, and let's see how this wood door is looking. Well, looks like it's going along great. Ooh. I can feel the heat from here. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, now let's check out a student film created here on campus titled, What is Anagama? Hi, I'm Hannah Osborne. I'm a freshman here, and I'm an LMA education major. So, Hannah, do you know about the Anagama kiln? I don't. So, if you had to take a guess, what would you say it is? Um... Sounds Greek. The Anagawa kiln is a kiln, and I think behind the intramural fields, um, they fire it like once a year or two years or something like that. Um, from what I remember from taking intro to ceramics a couple years ago. So. Okay, cool. So you know a little bit about it. A little bit, not much. I'm not much of a ceramics gal. <laughs> Amanda. What do you know about the Anagama kiln? Not really. Not, not much. Really. So, if you had to guess, what would you say it is? Um, well, I know what a kiln is. Um, it's where ceramics go to basically like bake them, kind of. I think it's very intense looking. It is. A lot of fire. Yeah. Um, to be completely honest, it kind of looks like a giant pizza oven. So it kind of makes me hungry. Okay, guys. Now, one of the other kilns is the Dragon Kiln. Now, they did send up some pictures so we can see what's going on over there. Let's check out these pictures and see what's going on.
All right, now just like Jing Dijin, we can't be there in person, but <laughs> sorry guys. Jing Dijin did send us a video, so let's check out their firing process. <laughs> So this is our professor. He's so good at uh, firing this kind of firing. It's called rock firing. He has a uh, good uh, experience in firing this. He can take us through it. So here, this time I am firing the Yuejin. This is the performance of a rock firing. And now we are going to do some final preparations. Right now, we are now preparing our can. And right now, this is what we're going to use. And we are about to finish with the preparation. After then, we are now beginning to fire. Right now, uh, uh, they're now uh, designing the surface of the foot. After this, uh, we we'll take it for fire into the kiln. Uh, and have a look how creative it is. Now this is now the process and is now uh, removing the surfaces. As you wait to see how it's going to work. Right. Now washing the surface to remove the fat cross. Then let it remain the textures. This is what is called Okay, right now our cream is now uh, approaching highest temperature. Right now it's about uh, 1,100. And, mm. and it's now ready. Yeah. Now removing some ashes. Mm. Mm. And you can see up there, uh, the temperature is about 1,100. 1,100. All right. All right, and we're back now. I'm back with Dr. Scott Meyer, and he's going to do the tong technique. So, get doc, Dr. Scott, tell me a little bit about this real quick. Yeah, sure. Um, this is my 10-foot set of tongs. <clears throat> it's on a traveling, thanks to our physical plan, it's on a traveling uh, track. And so you can imagine if you anchor it at the top in one place and you try to move, it'll go up. This will travel with me at the same line, so I can stay steady. I'll go inside. It's a little bit like a Raku technique, which everybody that's participating knows is a firing process that involves pulling pieces out of a kiln. Here we're going to keep them in the kiln, um, but I'm going to try to gracefully move a piece that I see that's mine. So if I mess it up, it's mine. And uh, I'm going to try to put it into a coal bed made of charcoal that we just put in, commercially available charcoal that you grill on, and uh, hope for different colors that might flash and so forth uh, in the finished product. So, so that piece will be rolling around in there while we continue to stoke for another, you know, three quarters of a day. So. Okay. 
All right, well, if he messes up a student one, we are all witnesses to it. Yeah, right. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, let's take a look at this and see what happens. Oh, he's got one. Oh, wow. What do you want next? <laughs> right. Awesome. Okay. Well, we do have a cool video for us to look at, and it's going to be a Skype collab. Let's see what this is going on. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Hello? Yeah. Cool. How, how's the firing going? Going, uh, I'm glad you did. This is so cool. <laughs> we're we're going to have some fun. It looks like they're stoking pretty hard. It's doing good. Uh, this is the wood king. Ah. Behind us. We have an on and off one that's kind of like down a little bit, but it's still keeping in center. Okay. We're going to do that. Because we're thinking about no. We're concerned about the families. We were in the beginning, and we will be the remainder of this Say investigation. What? What's going on? Because Brandon could be talking to us right now. Hi. Well, it looks like they were having a lot of fun over Skype during these past few days. Now I am with the Scots right now, Dr. Scott and Scott. So, Scott, tell me a little bit about this experience for you. Oh, geez, uh, this is probably about my 17th firing. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of an old, I'm kind of an old hand. <laughs> So, have you been here the entire time? It feels like it, but I'm, but I'm not. No, but I've been here a lot today, especially. But yeah. See, when you start getting gray in your beard, you know you've been around a while. So, this is what this process does to us. You know. We didn't have gray hair when we first started doing this. <laughs> so you've been helping with the stoking. I'm hoping I'm saying this the correct term. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, everything. Loading, making work. Loading. We do it all. Okay. Splitting wood. So you're just. We do it all. You do it all. We have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Scott. Dr. Scott, let's take a walk around this kiln. Let's sure. see what's going on here. Now, it looks like over here they're getting ready to stoke it again, they're right? Side stoke, yeah. Okay, they're going to side uh, stoke. Probably Scott's doing a little supplemental stoke just because uh, we lost some, you know, some uh, fuel off my little venture there. And uh, so we do it like a little supplemental stoke, give these guys a, a chance to get themselves going up here. So you see the flame that's coming out of there now, and that's the natural product of each stoke. So, <clears throat> you know, folks that come up here to do the side stoke have to reach, you know, brick and take, take the brick off and put the fuel in the kiln. And, uh, you know, they're staring right into the kiln and into flame. So it's... Uh, you know, it's a little bit of a learning curve. It's a, 
if it's it's a gut check too, you know. And I'm so proud of them. Um, every one of our students has been meaningful in this. And uh, yeah, sometimes I walk halfway up the hill and look back and hear them coordinating all of this together. And uh, you know, I guess I'm a proud papa. <laughs> Yeah, I've been seeing them do this. It takes a lot of teamwork, for sure. You've got to be almost in sync, it seems. Yeah, you do. And um, the, the other night, some, one of my crew, uh, one of my students had uh, left the lights on in her car, and it was parked up there. So we went up the hill, saw the lights, tried to contact anyone down here via their cell phone. They all had them off. How many times does that happen? No, I think that's great, because they were so dialed into this yeah. process. How many times do folks turn their cell phones yeah, off anymore? So I'm so proud of them. <laughs> well, look at those flames. Yeah, it's a long stoke. I mean, every time we stoke now, um, you know, it can take as many as uh, eight or ten minutes in between. You know, I'm, I'm looking at Clemson with that beautiful kiln that they have, and um, it's like, you know, it seems like about 15, 20 minutes or even more between their stokes. Meanwhile, we look like some kind of mortar barrage, so, yeah. Okay. Now, before we get to, we do have some animations that we're going to show. Before we do that, I want to take a quick shot to this wood that they have chopped. You said since when? Since mid-October, since okay. it got under 90 degrees okay. outside. This area was full of wood, and they'll use pretty much all of it before this is over. Now, Dr. Scott, let's take a look at some of these animations that we've got going on. Now, we have one for talking about the temperature. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, you've got a, um, well, right now you're looking, uh, well, here we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the first thing I can tell you is that the numerical reading is inaccurate. <laughs> um, we have found no probe, no thermal uh, couple probe that, um, you know, you would stick into the environment of the kiln and it hooks up to a little meter. And ideally, it, the meter would rise as the temperature rises and you could read it and, and have, a, you know, some sense of how hot you are. The problem is it's notoriously inaccurate. So my line to my students is I'll take an, an arrow pointing up to indicate a rise in temperature or one pointing down indicating a fall in temperature rather than, you know, trying to make an exact uh, reading. Uh, but you do see it climbing steadily because it does agree with itself. So even if it's not the accurate temperature, it does give, give us some idea of where we are. And you can start to handicap it based on other things that tell a more accurate uh, version of the temperature. So, so you, you brought up doing the ashes. So how long will it take when you're putting those ashes on the fire for the fire to kind of die and for it to get cool enough for you to take the ceramics out. Take the work out. <clears throat> it's a week cooling, and uh, fortunately, we have a lot of activity at the end of the semester anyway. But it's really hard to lay off and not try to melt a flashlight and look in there. And I know everybody that's involved with World Fire that had to have melted at least one flashlight in their life because like, you get itchy and you want to see how you did. And I tried desperately to avoid that, but we'll we'll have a week where it cools, and uh, so next Saturday, not tomorrow, but the next one, uh, April 29th, starting at 10 a.m., and going usually into late afternoon. Uh, we'll get in there and we'll see pieces that look like museum pieces, except they're fused to something else, or they're fused to the wall or something, and we have to... Can you tell, can you tell us a little bit about these comments? Um, yeah, these are comments from our log that we keep. Every hour we try to record uh, a temperature reading, and that would include the analog that you just saw the numerical reading for. It also uh, ultimately includes um, cones, and cones are pyrometric uh, materials that melt at known temperatures, and they look a little like your fingers. And when a finger droops and you look in there and you see it drooping, you know what temperature it is. Unfortunately, they don't fall up again, so you have one shot at knowing the temperature. But anyway, you're looking at these entries that um, um, have been recorded now so that you can see uh, what it looks like. And so how many pieces of wood are being thrown in? Uh, what's the result of that? If there's any adjustments to that, uh, of which there are many in the kiln, that you could adjust the air uh, holes and so forth relative to what uh, you're trying to accomplish for that segment of time. So. Uh, it's four and a half hour shifts uh, for us, and uh, we do sleep a little bit sometime. 
appearances notwithstanding. Um, and uh, so other people come on and they read the log and they find out, you know, where we are and, and what I always try to write also uh, what our goal is for that segment of time. So people that come on know what we're trying to do and, uh, you know, are consistent with their approach. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Come up, stay by me. Now, we ha it looks like we have been joined by the Dragon Kiln. Now, I don't think anybody's there to talk to us. But let's look can, at this. Uh, I, if they haven't already, I can tell you what I know about it, and I'm fascinated. Yeah. Um, I mean, this kiln looks like a beast, right? And it's a little under 40 feet long total. Uh, the Dragon Kiln apparently is 150 feet long. We have, you, you just saw us stoking our three side stoke ports. Apparently they have 62. <laughs> so it's a massively uh, larger venture when they fire, obviously. It's, I mean, the little chore choreography that you just saw is a, you know, I'm, I'm sure a, a small version of what they're doing. Um, I have not seen it fire. I, I'm familiar with the designs and, and uh, its place in history is incredible. Um, this one apparently dates to, from the Ming Dynasty, and uh, so the original is, you know, 600 years old. Uh, I'm guessing it's been rebuilt and replaced here and there, but um, it has the same design and the same effect, apparently. So, Okay, well, guys, you know, they've loaded the kiln. They're going to start putting the ashes on to cool it down. Now, join in next week, like Dr. Scott said, next Saturday April 29th, that's when we'll be unloading. We'll have another show. Now, before we leave, guys, let's get final thoughts. Dr. Scott, final thoughts on this whole collaboration. It, it, for me, it's beyond words. I'm looking at this screen, and, and you know, out of my mouth about a year and a half ago came the words, wood, uh, you know, world fire. And uh, then we had to chase that with what, it, what the devil does that mean. And I'm, I'm looking at what it means right here with these faces and these processes and everything that we share uh, with people that are literally halfway around the world, uh, my mind is blown. <laughs> okay, Sh Shazing, what final thoughts on this whole process? What, what do you hope to see next year or around the same time? Sorry, could you please repeat the question? Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah. What What are your final thoughts on this whole process, and what do you hope to see again next year? Um, you mean next year's what would uh, world fire? Yes, yes. Um. Um, so, uh, our final thoughts about the process, I think, um, um, first of all, we are very, in, very enjoy the whole process and enjoy communicate with um, Montevallo's kiln and Clemson's kiln and other uh, two kilns um, in China and um, we are uh, looking forward to see our results, uh, both both of us, um, and we hope we can all have a perfect or interesting artworks finally. And uh, about the next year's world world fire, uh, absolutely, we really looking forward to have another time to. Uh, gather together to have uh, to do the wood fire and um, maybe we can have more like um, community events or um, we can communicate more uh, uh, closely um, yes and we think it's interesting that the wood fire king is different uh, from king to king and uh, year to year so uh, every year if we get together is meaningful and all of the results will be different and um, we are eager to communicate with all of us. Yeah, we, 
We hope that this is the starting line, not the finish line for all of us. Clemson, uh, oh, well, they're stoking the fire again. So, <laughs> got a very similar process that he's doing right now. So, yeah. Hang on, in. Perfect. Are we back? What was the question? Uh, what are your final thoughts on World Fire, and what are you, what are you hoping to see in the future with this project? I'm hoping to see more kilns, more involved, just more involvement. Um, more exchange of ideas and techniques, um, and to burn more kilns. I can't say it better, John. I'm looking forward to all of our association to continue. I mean, it's talk of maybe a virtual show, maybe an actual oh. show, you know. So there's so many things we could do, even though we're so remote from each other. And I just look forward to all of our associations continuing. It's an honor for us to be part of it. Well, Clemson, Shazing, thank you guys so much for joining us via Skype. We've, I've loved getting to talk to you guys, and I know Dr. Scott's loved getting to talk with you guys and work with y'all. Um, for all of our viewers, thank you so much for watching. And like I said, again, be sure to tune in again next Saturday, April 29th, to see the unloading. You're going to see some really cool projects, I'm sure. All right, thank you guys. And we got a video of the Skype crew. Let's look at that before we leave. We're Skype crew. And we're Skype crew, and that's it. Well, I guess it has been fun because for me, my main job has been making sure like the Skype calls are all like connected and everything, and then even like talking with them on WeChat and make sure like any questions get answered, like keep them up to date, like when can we like reconnect with them like if they're having problems or anything this is like you know some extracurricular but a fun extracurricular that you know a lot of students really don't get the experience to have so and then the skype crew this is like on my free time you know um but i'm getting a good experience because i'm learning how to work skype and then also learning about this big old outdoor oven so and just experience Great. being around the actual team. Zanagama's more. <laughs> <laughs>